But what ain't gonna clear up who is that relationship between Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos? They're, they're headed for a divorce. Right now, they separated. They just living in the same house. Divorce is coming shortly. Man, I knew it was problems when Sean Payton went off on Russell Wilson because I had never seen any coach go off on his quarterback like that ever on the sideline during a game. Right, right. Never. What do you make of what has transpired this week now? Okay, he's been benched. Okay, we're going to Jared Stidham now. Russell Wilson comes out and says, oh, yeah, they approached me after the Chiefs game, told me if I didn't push back my guarantees, they were going to bitch. What do you make of the situation that's going on with Denver Broncos and Russell Wilson? Man, when I first heard that, I was like, wow, man, I, I was floored. I mean, I really was. And now, you know, us as players, like we know the business. We know the things that go on behind closed doors in those walls. And now the public is getting a sense of how ruthless this business can be. Um, I don't remember a time where a guy would sign a contract and the organization and the team would come to him and tell him if he doesn't re- renegotiate his contract from an injury standpoint, we're going to bench you so you're not going to get your guaranteed money. So basically, Russell Wilson is a healthy scratch. They are not mathematically out of the playoffs. It's come so much of a business that you are willing to take money out of this guy's pocket because I guess you I guess you think he's undeserving of it. You guys signed the contract. Never in my never in your right mind would you say th- think to yourself as a player like man, well listen, you know if I can stay healthy and you know play all 16 games, then you know I'll get my guaranteed money in the offseason. Not for one second do you think that the team is going to bench you on purpose just so you don't get paid. And man, that it, it, it for, for Russell Wilson to come out and say what he said uh, yesterday, a couple of days ago, that the team came to him and they told him after the Chiefs game, after you beat if, the Chiefs, yeah, if you don't renegotiate your contract, we're going to bench you so you don't get your guaranteed money. And he's he, he's able to play, but you you you, you take him out of the game. You name him, he's not the starting quarterback. And the only way that he cannot get his money is that he is physically unable to throw a football. And the only way for them to do that is to take him out of the game. I remember uh, this may have happened, you know, not to this degree, but I've seen two instances happen with two players who I have a lot of, you know, admiration for. Um, one was Charles Woodson, and the other one was Donovan McNabb. Because I'm saying to myself, you look at these Hall of Fame-worthy gentlemen and where they were in their career and what they gave to those organizations, and to be able to be let go, obviously, you know, Charles Woodson going to Green Bay, and obviously, you know, Donovan McNabb, I believe he went to Washington after this transpired. But both of these guys had ten million dollars signing bonuses. I mean, roster bonuses in uh, in their contracts in the last year of their deals. Ten million dollars, and they would do this roster bonus in March. And the Oakland Raiders at the time, and the Philadelphia Eagles chose to move on from Charles Woodson and Donovan McNabb over ten million dollar roster bonuses who guys that you thought would never leave an organization. And that was one of the instances that that I saw as a player. And I started doing my contracts different. Um, I didn't receive any roster bonuses, you know, in my contract after I have seen teams do that to them. Because I'm like, well, damn, if they can do that to Charles Wilson, down to me, damn, they can damn sure do it to me. So I started doing my contract different moving forward, try to get – you know, much as my guaranteed money in the first two or three years. I never had a roster bonus going into a fourth year of my deal because when I saw that, it's like, you know what? All that money is is, is figured into your contract. I'm, I'm going to never see it. 
And that, that was what I was afraid of. But now I see this, John Elway, you've taken $37 million out of this man's pocket from a former player that same, played the same position for this organization. Man, it's the GM, George Patton. And let's, let's no, just call it what no, it is. It's Sean Payton. That. No. It's Sean Payton. No. And I don't believe Sean. I don't believe Sean Payton gets in gets involved with a contract with Russell Wilson before he even got there. I don't believe it's Sean Payton. Listen, the way let me just say this: Russell Wilson has he's playing good football this year. He played terrible football last year, but Russell Wilson was never the quarterback that was going to be the reason you win. Big. He wasn't that in Seattle. It was more of a team effort than it was, okay, let's get on Russell's back and he's going to carry us. Now, when you go back, just just this year, and, and I'm going back to when Sean Payton went off on Russell Wilson, it all makes sense now. But Sean Payton is lucky. He chose the right one. And it's how you know Russell Wilson is a true professional. Because Sean Payton would have chose the wrong one, it would have ended up bad. And he knows that. And I'm just bringing the viewers into how grown men in the locker room, like, I don't play with some dudes that you disrespect them anyway. It didn't matter who it was. They was putting hands on you. Like, coaches were scared of guys. Absolutely. And for him to do that on the sideline and Russell not respond knowing – what was going on behind closed doors, knowing they wanted to bench him, knowing he said no. And so I think that kind of pissed Sean Payton off. And so he berated him on the sideline. He lucky it was Russell Wilson and the type of professional dude he was or that he is because he just sit there and took it. So, TJ, so let me ask you this question. If you if you think Sean Payton made this decision, then why didn't he put him on the bench after the Kansas City game? Probably because they hey, won. He he could have came out and said Russell Wilson's not playing this week. He's not the starting quarterback. If if Sean Payton was in charge of this decision, it would have been done way before now, because he makes the call as the as the head coach. He he says who's starting, who's not. So it didn't come from Sean Payton. But Sean Payton is running the show on that team. We all know that he's running the show. We know that. Like, Sean Payton has the power. He is running that show. And, and so, it, 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 and, and, and I'll get it. I get it. Maybe Russell Wilson isn't operating the offense the way Sean Payton wants. That's fine. Football-wise, he may not be playing the way Sean Payton expects him to play and wants him to play. That That's fine. But... To disrespect him the way that he did on national television, like, yeah, you're the coach, and technically you're our boss when I say our, the players, but it has to be a respect. I'm telling you, when I saw that, I was like, wow. Like, I, I don't recall ever seeing that because I know some of the players that I played with, and I know how crazy these dudes were. And I'm like, man, he lucky he didn't do that to the wrong dude. And Sean Payton can be fiery. And, you know, that was our generation of coaches. You know, they get in your face, they yell at you, they cuss you out. And now we're seeing a generation of uh, coaches that they don't do those type of things. It, it, it's more of a uh, let's work things out, let's talk type of thing. And so for Russell Wilson, yeah, they're separated right now. Their divorce is coming very very soon it's now where can he land on his feet what does Jared Stidham do I'm mean, last year when the Raiders Jared Stidham is like this just must be par for the course for him because the Raiders benched uh their car and if I'm not mistaken Jared Stidham's first start was against the 49ers and he went crazy they lost but man, he played lights out, and so if he plays lights out, they're oh, they should have been bench Russell Wilson, and, and we're not talking about you know Russell Wilson's play here. If Sean Payton 
doesn't feel like he's playing football the way I need my quarterbacks to play, I get it. I'm not removing any language out of my contract. Uh, no, sir. I'm not pushing anything back. No, sir. As players, understand this first and foremost at all times. It's a business. Mm-hmm. At all times, it's a business. Because as much as we love football, it's always a business to them. Always, so, so, always, so always. TJ, so regardless of what happens with the Denver Broncos moving forward, if Stidham comes out and he's playing awful, he has two or three picks in the first quarter or first half, Russell Wilson does not see the football field for the rest of the season. Nah, 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 nah. He not, he not seeing the field the rest of the season. <laughs> no chance. Yeah. No. And, and it goes to show you. And what you what you just said, they're still mathematically alive for the playoffs. <laughs> Man, I've seen crazy things matter. happen. And that's what I'm saying. And so these coaches get up and preach this and preach, does it really matter or, or is it the financial team, team reasons first, why? Team first, team right. first. This ain't team first. What about the rest of the players on that roster that feel like Russell Wilson gives them the best chance? What, what about those guys? Is it, is it about winning now? Or is it about the business and so what is it? You know, that that's the thing that people don't take into account. There's people in that locker room that support Russell Wilson. And when this came out, I'll be honest with you, Plex, I was like, you know, the Broncos, this is if this is what they want to do, this is fine. I, I was okay with it. But, but now then, But then when you found hearing, out why it was happening. Yeah, now now I'm not okay with it. Now that that's not cool. Because Hell no. Plex, I played with a guy. When he got cut, the team hired security. They were scared of him. They were scared to cut him. They hired security. That when they went and told him he was being released, security was there, present. Because they didn't know what he was going to do. Mm-hmm. I'm t- like, and the the people that are listening, I don't think they understand like how out of control some of these dudes be. Oh, you going to cut me? Oh, okay, I'm going to tear this thing up then. Mm-hmm. And if you in here, you part of what's going to get torn up. And, and so, Russell Wilson, he handled it. I Man, can you imagine uh, being told yeah. this and then you throw an interception in the game? You're like, oh, they're going to probably pull me now. Like, can you imagine what was going through his mind? Yeah. Because, because he I, knew what was happening behind closed doors. Yeah, when I sat and listened to his press conference, you know, I say to myself, you know, the, the, the way he has been playing over the what, last month and a half or two months and him knowing that and him knowing what was said behind closed doors and have to deal with that day in and day out from a mental standpoint and didn't have to go out and play well, you going to work every day as a player, you're the starting quarterback on this team and you don't know on a day-to-day basis if you're going to be benched or not because it's yeah. already been brought to your attention. Yeah, man, it's crazy. 